what is that shit? I brought it to the present today. This is an old collector's item. It's uh, Conrad Day. Did the cartoons for the Cleveland Daily Banner for years. And I went over to his garage and, and got a bunch of these cards. These were originals that he had drawn up. Uh, that they used to do the cartoons from the banner. Anyway, I thought this one had a lot kind of going going on with the way things are going on in, in this uh, in this day and time. And uh, so that's an original. That's an original cartoon. I'm gonna give it to you. You can frame it and keep it. And it states that the expression "the family who stays together" simply means nowadays that you can't afford the heat but one room. <laughs> That's about right. That's about right. I appreciate that. All right. You think this is actually original? Mm. That's one of the originals. I got out of his collection. His wife had back there in the garage of, uh, I've got a bunch of them, really. What's 219 mean? I don't know. Maybe that was when it was in the banner last or something. You know, he was a... Uh, he was the evening manager at Cook's Food Store when I worked there. Okay. Conrad Day. He didn't talk much, did he? No, he was kind of quiet, but he was... And uh, he always had a pipe. Yeah. But he was... Uh, when he talked, he had something interesting to say. He was a sh he was kind of a shorter guy, wasn't uh -huh. he? And his daughter was Connie Day, the golfer here in Cleveland that was so good. I don't. I never knew her. Yeah, oh, yeah. She but was, he lived on Georgetown Road, that's somewhere right. on the left. That's right. I'm going to frame right. this and put it in a place of... All right. Of, so, boy, it's a nice day, isn't it? It's absolutely great fall day. Did you, The Boys and Girls Club, y'all got that closed and getting ready to start on that? Well, that's what we're here today to talk about, the Boys and Girls Club, isn't it? Or we can. Whatever else you want we to can. talk about. Uh, yeah, the Boys and Girls Club, we just bought another building down there by the... Uh, Behind the village shopping center, it was a beauty shop down there. Duffs. Duffs, that's right. And we're expanding our offices into that space, and thanks for your help and what you're going to be able to do for us. Yeah. They're helping us get yeah. that done. But the Boys and Girls Club, we've grown through the last years. I mean, it's been amazing <clears throat> how how well we've been doing. It, it's, Derek... Kinzer, he's our CEO right now, and he's just doing a wonderful job managing the place. And uh, we've expanded recently. We've gone to, we're called the Boys and Girls Club of the Okoy region now. Mm. And uh, we had the club in Cleveland, and we have uh, seven units here in Cleveland. People don't realize that. A lot of people think we just are there on. Third Street and ball, the old ballpark curve mm -hmm. is what it used to be called. But we have seven units around Cleveland: the Blythe Unit, Cleveland State Unit, the Jacobs Unit, the Johnson Teen Center, the Painters Unit, the Powers Unit, and the Tuckers Unit. Then we have one now in Meigs County, and one in Polk County, and we have uh, five in Monroe County now. So, and. We're looking at putting another one in Copper Basin sometime in the future, I think. That'd be a good place for one. And McMahon County will probably be sometime coming in the next years. But uh, we've really grown. It's It's been a, a blessing. I've been on the board now for since 19, let me see, since 1993, I guess. I've been on the board of the Boys and Girls Club and, and worked hard and one of the things I found about the Boys and Girls Club, I've done a lot of things, but uh, uh, I get more out of working at the Boys and Girls Club or working for the Boys and Girls Club uh, than anything I've ever done. <clears throat> you can see instant gratification when you see these kids. I've seen, I've seen kids' lives changed because of some of the things we've done over there. And I, I see the, all the goodness that we're putting into it and. How we're making things change in a positive way. So it's a great organization. Here's another thing that's pretty interesting I brought. I'll share with you. This is a picture one day of I had Bill Talley. A lot of people know Bill Talley from Cleveland, Tennessee. He was born with no arms and no legs. 
and I had him come by the last time he was in town. He, he passed away now, but the last time he was in town, I had him come to the Boys and Girls Club and speak to the kids for us. And uh, Was he born with that with his short hands? Yeah, he was born with no arms and no legs. But he's got hands on him, no, uh, hasn't he? He's got little nubs. And uh, how, he, did he, how he, did he make it through life, Rick? He had the best penmanship I've ever seen. He he could he could he could write write better than anyone I've ever seen write. And uh, he he didn't he didn't expect any help doing anything. He didn't want it. In fact, he would get aggravated if you tried to help him. He wanted to do it himself. He did everything himself. He was Can you a imagine he drove growth? cars. He had everything. Can you imagine the first year he was in first grade? Oh, I know. I mean, can you? Can you, I can't. There's. I he's can't got imagine. A, he's got a book out, and I'm trying to think of the name of it. I, I I meant to bring it with me, and I forgot. But, uh, uh, you know, he was riding a pony when he was a little bitty kid. I mean, just you know. Now we used to. There used to be a guy around here that we used to call Tally. Is that related to him? Everybody calling Tally, or is that somebody? Bill, uh, well, uh, Bill Tally. I mean, was this guy ever married? Well, he was. Yes, he was, and he's got one son. Mm. But he was never married in Cleveland, Tennessee. He ended up uh, going to Texas to coach with Steve Sloan out there at Texas. So he was originally from Cleveland. Oh yes. Where did he go to grammar school? Uh, mm -hmm. He went to all the school systems here in Cleveland, Arnold School, probably. He was at a disadvantage, wasn't he? Well, not according to him. <laughs> he did not want to be accused of being disadvantaged. He uh, he was an amazing person. I mean, I I played in All Star baseball one time in the, in the, uh Fulbright. Yeah, over here at Fulbright, and I was a catcher, and he was the coach. He he, he was the coach of the All Star team that year, and I would hit I would hit uh, the no, I was catching for him, and he was hitting infield, and yeah. they'd throw it back in, and I'd have, and I'd set it on his nub right there, and he had this little bat that he had there in his arm. I put it on this nub, and he'd, he'd toss it up and grab that bat. He'd hit infield, and he could hit in <laughs> and outfield. I mean, he could hit the ball better than anybody I ever seen. He could put it directly. If he wanted to hit it right on the third base line, he hit it right on the third base line. If he wanted to hit it short stock, he did. He he was really good. I. They're naming the baseball field. Uh, there's a ceremony going to be coming up first of the year, maybe next year, and uh, it's going to be at Cleveland High School. They're going, to, I think, name the baseball park after him. And rightfully so. That may be he may be one of the most inspiring people that's ever come out of Cleveland. Yeah. Besides me and you, right? Yeah. Besides you and I. That's right. Yeah. Now let me ask you this: the Boys and Girls Club. When did when did they? Oh, I knew he was going to ask me. When that. did the, do we know? We don't. I know. don't have one of my historians with me today, so uh, let's guess when it started. Yeah, was you? Was you? Did you go there? Uh, well, I went there. I went to the old YMCA more when I went, and then I had my son when he was small. I took him over there and got him interested in um, football. Did, did, they did, had a football league over there then, and I had probably my son playing over there some. Did, did the uh, did the did the did it exist at that time the boys club when you were that age you just never went. It started at a, I, I wish I had brought some historians with me because uh, I've heard the story but I can't remember it. But it started in a in a church on the south side of town and then it went. I think it ended up down there by where the old YMCA was. For a period of time, but isn't it a national organization? Yeah, and I know that organization is about 160 years old now. Yeah, so it, the, the first one here started. The national organization is now based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we've got, you know, Cleveland. Um, uh, Morris Green was one of the founders of the Boys and Girls Club in Cleveland. I don't know if you remember no. Morris. He's, he's gone now, but he had an insurance agency. and uh, He was one of the founders of the Boys and Girls Club that helped get it started. And uh, That would have been Carolyn Green Realty back in the day. No, 
Morris Morris Green. But wasn't it wasn't it Carol and Green Insurance I don't, wrote that it, realty at one time? I it, think. It, I, you know, it may have been. I don't I don't remember that, but may may I remember it Morris Green? I think. But do you remember? I remember at the old Boys and Girls Club they used to have a bumper pool. Yeah. Didn't they have bumper pool in one of the rooms? And, yeah. And uh, they had the. They, they, it's it's a lot different now than it used to be, but they yeah. still have games and so forth for them well, to play. Well, if you had a bumper pool game in there, the kids wouldn't even play it nowadays, would they? No. What what do that? What do the, now? I was in there with you two weeks ago. I gave you a little tour. Yeah. Yeah, and they uh, they've added on to where the back porch is is now a room. That's the Johnson Teen Center. So, is is that like a little older people? That's the teenagers. We're growing in that building so much that we we really need to put the teenagers in a separate building. And where, where did the we teenage, hope to do that later? Where did the teenagers go back when I was going there? Were they going there too, but they were just mixed in? Yes, yes. So these teenagers, why are they there? I mean, is it like an after-school place? Yeah. You got to realize some of the kids from the Boys and Girls Club. <clears throat> They come from some really tough families. I mean, uh, there's really no place for them to go back home to. I mean, they, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of them don't want to go home. Uh, their family life may not, not all of them, but their family life not be, not, not be something they want to spend that much time at home. A lot of them don't have anything to eat at home. We feed them at the Boys and Girls Club now. We make sure they get a, a meal each day. How do you, how do, how does that work? <laughs> It's amazing how it works. Actually, we uh, we we package up everything and have a meal ready for them when they come in in the afternoons. When they when the kids get there in the afternoons, we bus them into each of our locations wherever they may be from the schools that they're closest <clears throat> closest to. And the first thing they do is they'll come in and they'll have power hour where they do their homework and they have. We have people there to help them with homework. Our goal is now is to try to get these kids through high school and prepare them for college, the military service, or a technical type job. So now during the day, during a normal normal day, uh, in the, during school time, is there people there? Is there kids there then, or that are not in school, or what's happening? We're getting ready for the kids. A lot of uh, our staff, some of our staff is part-time, which comes in when the kids come in in the afternoon. They'll get there around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And, and so the bus picks them up at these various schools? That's correct. So they can choose, I'm going to ride the bus home or I'm going to ride the bus to the boys' club? Uh, basically, we bring them to the boys' and girls' club. That's what they're getting on our bus for. So, so does the boys' and girls' club have their own bus? We have our own bus buses. And are they yellow buses, like the regular buses? No, most of them are white. We've got a couple of red ones now, but uh, our colors are red, white, and blue. So, so. You, there's a special stop for them at, these, at all the schools? Yeah, we just pull in just like the regular buses do, and the kids, they know it's a Boys and Girls Club bus. They know to get on it. That's where they're going. So they're going to get out of school at 2.30, and instead of going to home, Mm -hmm. They're going to go to the Boys and Girls Club. And a lot of parents have signed them up to come to the club because they're working jobs. This helps. The Boys and Girls Clubs helps not only the kids, but it helps a lot of the parents and the grandparents. A lot of these kids are raised by their grandparents, and so it gives them time also. So, so if I'm, if I'm a, a working uh, if I'm working and my ki I don't have anybody to pick up my kids, I don't have a an older son that picks them up or something. It's when school gets out at two and two thirty and three, they instead of standing there waiting for somebody mm -hmm. to pick them up at five thirty, the boys and girls club will have to send a bus to you, and you'll send them over there and have a snack for them. We'll have yeah, we'll have a, a nice meal for them. Like what's what would the meal be? I should have brought you one of them at the. It's, is it, it's not a lunch. It's a it's, it's bagged up daily, and it's 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 nutrients, it's fruits, it's uh, 
some types of vegetables, uh, different type things to eat. Snack stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and this, It's not junk food. So these volunteers come. We have volunteers and we have, and we hire a lot of Lee University students. Lee University is a, a good, a good, good for the Boys and Girls Club. We've really gotten some good employees from Lee University. So these aren't all volunteers that's no. coming and helping bag and stuff up. No, no, no. Where do they get the food? We work with the government. There's some government agencies that we work with to get funding for this food, and then we have another company that we buy to purchase the food from, and it's a lot of bookkeeping involved, but uh, it's worth it to help these Is kids. it a brown paper sack? Yes. So mm -hmm. they come in and grab it? Most of the time, yes. Sometimes we lay it out in buffet style for them. Five days a week? Yes. And then, and then they have an hour, power hour, where somebody can help them with their algebra or help them with all their homework. Uh, and what? now, and now, used to, it, the Boys and Girls Club was just a place for them to come play. Yeah, you know, basketball. Get, basketball. Uh, they, we still want them to get their exercise and be able to to uh, do those type of things, but we want to educate them more. So we want to get them ready for school. So now when they come in, they have a number. They'll, they'll come in and on a computer pad, they'll sign in so we know they're there. Then they'll go into their first uh, uh, power hour and they'll sign in to where they're going for that. So we know we keep up with them and follow them all through the building. Everywhere they go, they have to sign in with their number that they're going to be in. What if they don't have homework? Uh, they, they go to, to the other they, room. If they don't, if they don't have homework, we've got some computer games that are educational driven that they can learn subjects. If they're having a, if they're having a hard time with math, these computer games that they can play are geared towards helping them in the math world, and they get credits, mm. and they get. They, like try the old build, they try to build their they try to build their points up with credits and then they get a prize and things like this. So there's other ways to try to help them with their. So they have gifts. to do this power hour. Yes, we try to make them whether it's their homework or whether it's or something computer like games yeah. with points. Most of the time, that's the way it works. Then, I'm not there every day. I'm a board member. I'm a yeah. volunteer board member. So. I'm trying to give you, I'm probably hitting and missing on a lot of these things. Now, what they, what's after that? What do they do after that? If they're if they're there till what, 5.30 or something? Sometimes they're there to 6.30, 7. What time does the Boys and Girls Club close? We try to stay there, I think, until about 7. So what if somebody, so a, a, a kid... A child could end up going there around two thirty and having to stay till seven. Yes. Five days a week. Yes. That would get old. Mm -hmm. I tell you something though, the kids, the kids that come there, D, you'll, it's amazing. You can see, I've seen kids when they first start coming there, mm -hmm. they're shy, they're backwards, or they've got mental problems. You can just tell it. And then after they've been there a while, you can see them opening up. And you see their personalities coming out in them. They're laughing. They're having fun. It's just a game changer for some of these. Was kids. this what was this the call of the Boys and Girls Club ever since? You know, the Boys and Girls Club in the beginning was probably a place for kids to go, just an after school program. It started probably just as an after school program for kids that just didn't have a place to go. But but the same mission. It's just improved. Oh, it, 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 in other words, I'm saying that. However, whenever the Boys and Girls Club, I'm so I'm going to say they had the same passion as the people that work there do now. They just do, were doing all they could. Yes, it's evolved. Yes, back then, you know, it it was sports. It was you know, running and playing and just letting them exercise and get the get their, you know. Energy. When I used to go there, I would go, and it was just Why all did about. You go there? I can't remember. I can't remember, but I do remember going quite often. I played pee wee football there, uh -huh. and then I remember going there after school for something, and uh, and it was just a. It was. 
it was a it was kind of a rough house place to be honest with you but it was place to, it was a place to be but it was it was all about basketball well our, our football or something like yeah that. eddie cartwright you know eddie cartwright, oh know him you? well yeah eddie uh he coached football over there a peewee program for years and years what was the name of that team he coached I, you know I, he's told me several times i can't remember but uh they did well you know they take them down to florida and play against other teams, boys and girls yeah. clubs down there, give them a trip out and so forth. But it's evolved now to more simple, st not simple, but more educational, right? Well, we try to emphasize, our goal today is to try to get these kids ready to deal with life in the future. Sometimes they come from a background and a bad family, single mothers, living with grandmothers and piles of kids living in one house. Some of them don't have food to eat. Uh, uh, some of them are uh, homeless. I mean, I've had them tell me that they sleep in cars. Mm. Uh, and, you know, they just keep moving around, moving around, trying to find a place to settle it. It's just some of these kids' lives, it's unbelievable when you hear them. We do a program called Youth of the Year, and that was one of the first things that got my attention is I started pushing this Youth of the Year program because I thought that was a great program. And we started having people come in and judge the Youth of the Year competition for us. And we used to do it down at the Chamber of Commerce. It, it goes on at Lee University now. But we would get business people around town to come and judge and we'd have about seven or eight candidates where they were the youth of the month, and then they graduated, and they go to youth of the year. And this on the national level, they have to write essays. They have to do a lot of stuff to compete in this program. And uh, we had two kids back when I was the head of Boys and Girls. We had two of them that won the whole state competition. They won the regional competition. And they ended up going to Washington, and they sat in the White House and got a picture made with the president. And uh, and they wouldn't have done that if it weren't for the bus that took them there after school. Well, that's probably right. In the beginning. But we've got a lot of kids in this Youth of the Year program now, and that's something that we really push. I would love to invite anyone who would be interested in being a judge at one of these Youth of the Year contests. We do it once a year. It's an annual event. And... It, I tell you something, it's amazing when you see it. We have a whole program of way to judge them. You just rate them one through ten on each category mm -hmm. and some of these things. And they these kids will come out and they'll make a, a, a two or three minute presentation about their life and what the Boys and Girls Club has done to change their lives. And I'm telling you something to see. What about Saturdays? What's going on there Saturdays? You know, that was something I... When I first got involved, I kept pushing for <coughs> Saturdays, kept pushing for Saturdays. Because it was open Saturdays when I was young. And it wasn't now, it's closed. And I kept thinking, there was something wrong there that we're not open on Saturdays. It, it had to be the funding. We must not have had enough funding to, to make that happen. But what I found out was it was the funding, but it's also the help. And, you know, trying to keep our, our attention focused on what we're trying to accomplish on a daily basis. So we work the school hours. We work the same hours as the school does. We're an after-school type program. And we work the same hours as schools. If schools are off, we're usually off. Now, we have permanent employees that are working all the time that are getting ready for the next events. We do things like Christmas. Uh, unbelievable the Christmas programs we do. We give all these kids have presents. Uh, they have, the kids have their parents and grandparents and all that stuff come and sit down and we have the kids waiting on the tables, waiting on them and pre it's, a, it's a pretty amazing sight. Last year we had, because of COVID, we had a drive-through and had it lit up outside mm -hmm. for the people to come and get their presents and food. Mm -hmm. And, you know, churches donate food, a lot of grocery stores donate food, but we had food for them. And they lined up 
all the way down to where the old Starview Drive-In Theater used to be down That's, there at that intersection. They were yeah. lined up all the way up through there, coming through the, our lot to pick up their presents and get food. It's pretty amazing. It is. And I'm not sure. I think we're doing that again this year that way, but then we'll probably go back to it. But we used to set up our gymnasium over there, and we'd have these people come in over there and sit down and do it in several different batches and sit down and eat and get waited on. So, so Saturdays, the expense of staying open, open on Saturdays probably would be better. The funds would probably be better, better suited for during the week when it needed to. That's, that's, that's probably the thinking. That's why I used to fight for for Saturdays, but then I realized if we were open that many hours a week, we wouldn't have the help that we've got. Now. Yeah, we've got great help. We don't pay them a whole lot. Most of the help we have do it because of the love they have to, for this program and the kids. Where, where does the funding come from? Well, United Way used to be a big supporter, but they're not as, as much anymore. Uh, you know, we we cured away from the United Way money, and uh, we get uh, um, the county government, we get $5,000 a year from them now. I'm hoping to get some more in the future. Uh, the city, the land that we've got over here, a lot of the land and so forth comes from the city. But uh, uh, most of our money is from grants and from donations. You have a grant writer? Oh, yes, we have a grant writer, and, and we we work hard for grants. We've had a lot of things that, uh, you know, some bike parts. We found a grant for a bike park. So if somebody looks at the looks at a... a, a organization like that and say why did they spend money for this instead of that it may be that that's what all what they got the grant for that's right that's right so you can't really be critical of these organizations because they maybe they just got grants for coffee cups and not for you know something else right well that that's somewhat right i mean we work when i first got started in in boys and girls club i'll say this some of the board members, when I was asked to become on the board, they had just had a really bad turnover. Of, 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 they didn't have a good organization with the money and so forth, and they'd lost uh, money. They, they basically was barely hanging on to keep the doors open. And uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we're now doing a little over about $3.3 million in a budget right now. A year? Yes. And where's that? It comes through grants? It comes from grants. It comes from donations. It comes from... Regular donations? We have people that give money on a regular basis, and we sure need more if anybody wants to give any. Uh, End-of-life legacy funds is something we're trying to work on. There's several things that we work on here. Well... There's Johnny no. Holden, Legacy Fund. Johnny Holden. <laughs> I'd, I'd say he's a big supporter, you right? You know, and a Legacy Fund is something, if you wanted to say you wanted to be a member of a Legacy Fund, you don't have to give a penny. All you've got to do is tell us you want to be on a member of our Legacy Fund. By doing that, that means you'll go do your will and estate planning, and we'll get something at the end of your life. That's Not, what a Legacy Fund is. Now, Max Everhart was on the board, right? That's what I remember. Yes. Was that prior to you or right about the same time? Uh, he was prior to me, I think. Uh, I'm trying to think who some of the board members were. I mean, I came in, and like I said, 1993, and, you know, that there was a lot of board members there before I ever got there. That's were you sure. green? Huh? You, were you green when you came in? Sure I was. I was listening and didn't know a thing about the Boys and Girls Club, and I couldn't. It took me a long time to figure out what it was all about. To be honest, why did you get on the board? I just thought it was time to give something back. You know, and you, you just, work, you work, you work, and, and you do things, and and you saw an opening there. I, I was asked. I had a Buck Thurgood. I remember. I know Buck. He was a board member there, and he asked me if I'd be interested in serving on the board. And I looked at him. I said, Sure. So that's how I got when, when did you start getting the real deep passion for it? Probably uh, I went on the board in 93 and 
probably about 95, I started realizing. Was there a moment? Oh, the Youth of the Year program, I got inspired by that, and I, I worked on that and built it up and tried to make the best out of it. I used to get those kids, and I'd take them around to businesses around town, mm -hmm. and I'd have it set up where in the business they would have the, their boardroom similar to this and have employees in there, and we'd let those kids come in and practice doing their presentations, mm -hmm. and those board members would ask them questions, and then when that was over with, they'd tell them, said, you need to stand still, get your hands out of your pocket, quit licking your lips, quit scratching your nose, mm -hmm. and we're trying to get them ready to go <laughs> to the com competition, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it, where it we, worked. It worked. Yeah, it worked. But, uh, you know, the Boys and Girls Club, there's a lot of missions there. Uh, if it weren't for the local donations, could it make it? No. I mean, we get donations from a lot of different places. I mean, there's a lot of great corporations that have given us some money, you know, and some of it's sometimes a sizable. I'm going to give you a good example of something. When I was the head, they call it chief volunteer officer. I was the chief volunteer officer. We had a girl from Polk County that kept coming, wanting to meet with us. And she wanted a Boys and Girls Club in Polk County. And, you know, we told her it would take this amount of money and some of these type of things, and she'd go and come back and have it. And so we started talking to the Boys and Girls Club National. The National is in um, Atlanta. And we started talking to them about trying to open a unit in Polk County. Well, they didn't want us to open one in Polk County. They wanted us to open one in a lower end of town. They wanted us to keep putting them in the poor sections of town and not go into those rural areas. And this girl kept coming back, coming back, and coming back. And I told them then, I said, we need to put one in Polk County. So we found a, a church up there and rented a little space from them and started. She had some money from the county government that they gave to help get it started, to fund it for a year. And uh, make a long story short, we started that Boys and Girls Club. Well, it was a hit from day one. I mean, it was amazing the kids up in Polk County signed up for it, but we could only get so many kids into that building. You can only, size-wise, you can only have so many per square feet. So we needed more space, and to try to rent space it was too expensive. So we got to looking for money, and we found some of that rural development money. Hmm. Come to find out, we built a brand new facility up there for less than we was paying in rent. Is that right? Through some rural development money. That club is one of the prettiest clubs you've ever seen now. Where is it at? If you go through downtown Polk County, it's the first, it's the second road to the right after you go through the main red light. I think it's Highway 431 or something like that. And it's just down the road. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they've just built it. It's just, just built that recently. Well, we built the building, and they added a, the gym. We built the building through the rural development money. Then this place was. We, we packed it out so fast we couldn't add any more kids. We had kids on a waiting list to to be there, to get in it, and we couldn't put any more kids in even in that new facility that we built. Mm -hmm. So we had to add on or something. We had a private donor start donating $100,000 a year. We never found out who it was. And they wanted a gymnasium. It might be me. Might be. <laughs> we don't know. But we have built a gymnasium up there now that's attached to that building. And that opens the doors for more kids to be able to come. And now we've got that new unit. We've got a brand new gymnasium. We've got a bicycle track. Uh, we found a grant in, in Dalton, Georgia mm -hmm. that came from a lady that lived in France, her husband, and he rode bicycles. 
and was a big bicyclist, and he passed away, and she started a, a grant for bicycles and bicycle tracks, and we won that. She buys the bicycles, buys the storage buildings, and pays for the tracks to be built. Well, he must have been rich. Anyway, we've got those tracks. We've got one in Cleveland now. We've got one in Meigs County now, and we've got one in Polk County now, these bicycle tracks. But uh, we've got that. We've got big gym sets that we got a grant for, the outdoor gym set. We've got outdoor basketball courts. We've got, uh, we're putting up soccer fields up there. I mean, Polk County is amazing. And it got the attention of, of the Boys and Girls Club National to the point that they're supporting these things around the country now. We ended up putting another one in Meigs County, did the same thing up there. And you ought to see the one we've got in Meigs County. It's amazing too. Now, and we've got a waiting list up there of kids to get in it. And they were against that idea. They were in the beginning. At first. But now they've seen that the rural develop the rural development is a good area to go for, for kids. They need help too. What did they do two hundred years ago before you had places like that? Did did the You farmed. <laughs> I guess you worked, right? <laughs> you worked. And that might have been better off, right? I guess you farmed, yeah. Well, the parents were working from working at home, right? Most of them, I guess, they were working from home, or they, you know, or the, or the wife was home. The, back then, parents were parents. We don't have right now. The problem I think is these kids are born and they don't have any real parents sometimes. And I don't want to. I don't want to make all all these parents feel that way. But we've got some kids that are, are they're born from kids. They're kids that had kids. But 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 they had kids younger then, didn't they? Well I'm not sure what you mean by they had well, kids. Well but didn't they usually usually had kids at nineteen, twenty years old and so I'm they not had, sure if you had dual parents. I think way the, back when back in the I think you always back the, then in they the had the more sixties you had parents. You had you had someone at home. Yes. And now, now they don't even have. They don't. Even, some of them don't even know who their daddies are. You know, they've never had a daddy. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these boys, they need men to be around them because they've never had a man around them. And that's something the boys and girls club can offer. You know, it's it's just an amazing place to. I I would highly recommend anyone to donate their time. I'd love to give tours. Anybody wants to tour, I'll be happy to give them a tour and take them through the place and let them see it. It's really nice. Yeah. It really is. He was uh, supposed to be here with us today, and his schedule got messed up, but I wish he could have been here. He could have told you even a, a lot more about what's going on there than, than I can. Do you think that the Boys and Girls Club back in the day, years ago, was for the, the, the poorer kids? I think it was a... I mean, that's... that's I think it was originally developed for working parents to have a place as a day service type thing. And then and then it got to be not the parents, the kids not having parents, but one parent and so forth. And it got to be more of a one-sided type thing. And then now, I mean, I see more grandmothers raising these kids now. It's amazing the grandmothers that raise them. You know, why is it these grand, if I was a grandparent, raising my grandkid, I'd almost feel like it was my fault that my, that I had not taught my kids enough to take care of their kids. Does that well, make sense? They do feel that way, I'm afraid. That's yeah. why they're taking care of them. They feel guilty, I I, I think so. Yeah. And I don't know what happens, but but it's a great organization. But did you, did back when you were, so you were in '93. You you st went on that board. You said you really didn't get a passion for it for the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. But I just went to board meetings and listened. 
back in the eight, early 80s, do you remember just driving by there and not even hardly glancing at the boys' cl girls' yeah, club? Yeah, I'd see it over there. I knew what it was, but I thought it was more like a YMCA or something. That's what I've always thought. Yeah, see, that, that's... Just a different location. Yeah, and then, you know, uh, YCAP, YMCA has a program they call YCAP, and a lot of people think that's the same thing as the Boys and Girls Club, but it's just as different as Daylights and Dark. It's just, we do a lot of different things. Now, now they have an after-school program too, sure, right? Sure, it's called YCAP. So why... It, our program is entirely different from that. We have people there to help them with schoolwork and so YCAP, and I, you know, I don't know that much about it, and I shouldn't say a whole lot, but I think it's more involved in one or two little programs that they do there, like... I know one time it was boxing. They were into boxing out there or something. But but the the boys and girls club is 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 really a substitute parent. It sounds like. Well, what we are and what I'd like to say we are is that we're mentors. We're there to help these kids. They need to learn what it's like to be an adult to grow into adulthood. And, and and be able to manage money, be able to uh, 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 have a life, be able to work a job and take a paycheck home. And, and, you know, they really need to learn what's coming in front of them. Most of these people, you know, if, if you just wake up and do nothing every day, you know, they, you're a hard worker. You have to plan to get ahead. You can't just make it. It's not going to happen if you don't work hard to make it happen. So, you know, we try to get these kids ready. Are you going to go to college? Well, I don't know. No, I don't think so. Well, what are you going to do when, if you don't go to college? I don't know. Well, what would you think you'd like to do? You're going to have to go to work somewhere, do something. You know, you just try to mentor them and talk to them and let, let them plan ahead and let them understand what's coming. And, you know, we're doing something I think is going to be unique, and that's this pie center. You've heard what Boy, the pie yeah. center. That's the yeah. American Uniform building over there. And it's going to be called the pie center, and we're going to put a unit over there in the pie center. This is kind of what it'll look like, but that's just a picture of it when it's going to be finished. Mm -hmm. But we're So, so you're going to have a, a unit there? Yes. And what that does, it's going to be... We will be taking kids there by bus, and they will be there to go and train. We're going to be teaching money matters there, and we're going to be teaching them about managing money all the way through to how the stock market works and all these type of things. They'll learn it all right mm -hmm. there. Then, and another side of it, we're going to be doing um, we're going to be doing a production line assembly where. Uh, I forget what they're going to be making, but they can make, uh, um, they're going to be able to make uh, trophies, not trophies, but uh, plaques and things like that. Mm. And, and, and we use a lot of those things within our organization, so we'll quit buying them and we'll start making them, let those kids make them. We'll have uh, inventory. They'll have inventory. We're going to teach them how to do inventory. Now then, also in the pie center, it, uh, that's called, the, the PI Center stands for Partnerships in Industry. That's what PI stands for. That's from the Bradley County Board of Education, the PI Center, Partnerships in Industry. Ours is going to be called the Morlock Youth Force Center. And after we're, Jeff, I guess. We're, we're going to name this after Jeff Morlock, and Jeff never wanted anything named after him. He was that type of guy, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, he was one of the ones that worked hard at helping the Boys and Girls Club be a success. So we wanted to do something in his honor, so we're going to be calling that the Morlock Youth Force Center. And it's going to be from the Boys and Girls Club of the Okoy region. And it uh, will be designed to facilitate a space that will provide youth the tools they need to fulfill their mission. Productive, caring, responsible citizens. The vision and the mission of PI is partnership in industry. That goes along with what they're trying to do over there. And, you know, rock construction is going to be over there. 
they're going to be teaching them how to run heavy equipment and doing that stuff. We're going to have uh, uh, UPS. They'll be able to drive like a simulator of UPS trucks. We've got four of those coming that'll be in there that we'll teach them how to be truck drivers. Nothing else. If they don't go to school, we want to get them a job driving a truck. Well, even if they go to something. school, they know this, this this basic part of it. That's right. You know. Th these are the basics that's going to teach them how to survive in this world. Going now, in, in, uh, Not yeah. all kids are made for college. No. Not I, all I wasn't. I wasn't either. Yeah. I, didn't, I wasn't yeah. made for college. But Did I've you go straight to the Army? I was drafted, yes. What was your number? 26, I think. Number 26? Yeah. You were the 26th person? Yes. They drew. Who was 25? I don't remember. It was by your birthday. Mine was August 16th. Mine was 21 or 26. I just knew when I was drawn that was it for me. <laughs> Had you, how long have you been out of high school? Uh, about a year. I went to Cleveland State for a little while. What did you study there? Oh, nothing. I didn't know just what went. I wanted to do. I just I went. I'd always played in high school and and, uh, and I, I just didn't like college and so I did, when you got the number what, how was Vietnam rolling at the time I'm sorry was Vietnam when you oh, got yeah, it was right in the midst of Vietnam I mean what what year would did you get drafted I went in in 1970 I was, I graduated from high school in 69 I went I was drafted in 70 68 was like the worst year right 67 Seven, 68. 68 yeah anyway everybody was going to Vietnam so I just assumed I was going to Vietnam and uh, I ended up were you scared well, you know, you don't ever, I, hey, back back then, if you're supposed to serve your country, serve your country. I hope somebody would do that today. Was there, was, there, sure was, was there a question whether or not you'd go? No. If you was drafted? No. I mean, you were going to volunteer, but if you drafted, you're going to go. That's right. Oh, I could have volunteered and signed up for three years and got to done something I wanted to do, but I let them draft me. I ended up being a telephone man. That's what I ended up. I, I went to signal corps school. Did you pick that, or did you just kind of finagle? No, that's what they selected me to do. That's what they wonder said. why. I, well, they give you tests, and they thought I'd be a good telephone man. Wonder why that is. Wonder what on that test made you. What was the telephone thing? What you, you mean, like radio man? Yeah. Carry the big. What it was when I was in the Signal Corps, uh, I ended up going to Germany instead of Vietnam. Every class, we were having two classes a day graduate, a day class and a night class mm. from that school to try to get troops over to Nam. And they came down and said there was a shortage in Europe, and they took every other class that week and sent us to, to Europe. So I ended up going to Europe. And uh, Why do they call it the Signal Corps? It's basically telephone communication. In other words, it's Signal. Yeah. Basically what I did is I was a patch panel operator. I had a deuce and a half truck, and I had a great big board in You remember back in the old movies, those old patch panel operators? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's what was in the back of that big yeah, old deuce green, and a half truck. Like on Green Acres? Remember yeah. they had the... The old patch yeah. panel. And I had a generator, a great big generator I pulled, and in the back of the deuce and a half, I had another big set of uh, 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 antennas. And it had these big old aluminum tube antennas, and you'd set them up with guide cables and had a jack system to set them up and set an antenna up. And what we did is we got radio communications from one battalion to another. It would be just like in a war. So know. what was that like? A, what what they call that station? Is there they have a, a name was, for it? I, well, I was, I was in the 93rd signal. But I mean, you, so you'd go in and set up the radio and the tower and... <laughs> Button down the hatchets and, and get we, ready to communicate. And our commander from our battalion would be able to talk to a battalion that was, say, in Knoxville, Tennessee. On another one might have been in Memphis. So you might have Tennessee. to say, we need you to send some planes over here. They're getting bombed and, yeah. uh, and talk to the guy on the ground that's getting yeah. shot at. Back, that was before cell phones, remember? Yeah, that? <laughs> but they'd go, like, they'd go like this, right? Yeah. Talk like big with those big walkie-talkies. Yeah. So did you get in? You didn't have to do any of that, right? What? You didn't see any war? No, I, I didn't. I, I was in Germany. We went out and played Army a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, but you were ready. You had I, to be ready, right? I, we had to be ready all the time. And uh, we went out for a field problem 
three times a year, and basically that's going out and camping for a week in in, in the forest somewhere. I've did had, you? I've had snow up this high that I was having to walk. Through. Did you have to go through basic training? Oh yeah, I went to Fort Knox, Kentucky for basic. How long was this? I, I can't remember back then. Seems like. 10, 12 weeks, eight Was weeks. it bad? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I had to do extra PT. Physical, for what? Physical training is what that was called. What, for what? Well, I went into the mess hall the first day to get our food, and there was a big old sergeant. <laughs> the first there. day? Yeah, the first day of basic training. This was when I got my head shaved and all that. And we went out and did exercise that morning and all that stuff. And then we had to go in for, eat, for eating. <laughs> and it... Uh, I went in for the dining room, and this big old sergeant sat over and said, Hey, you! Here! Now! And I went over, he said, You get on these scales. I got on the scales. He said, Ah, he says, You're on my fat boys list. <laughs> and he said, You meet me here every week, every day. We're going back and do some more exercise before you eat. <laughs> so Were you heavy? Huh? Were you heavy? I was when I went in. I came out, and I was perfect. <laughs> what was you when you went in about? I was about uh, probably 195 when I went And you're what? I, you're played about, foot, I played football for the state championship team, Cleveland High School. I mean, you were supposed to bulk up. Yeah, right? I, was pretty, I was pretty fit back then, but I weighed about 190, something like that. You're about my height, right? Yeah. So that was a little heavy. Yeah. But th so then, so when you came out, what did you weigh? Uh, about, about 150. That's what I weigh. Mm -hmm. Did you think it helped you go into the Army? Yeah. If it hadn't have been, what would you have gone? What would you have happened? I don't know. I think the Army got me prepared to what was coming ahead. You know, the world changes. When you, when you graduate from high school, the world changes, whether you're ready for it or not. <laughs> you're either going to go to another school or you're going to go get a job or you're going to go to the military, you're going to do something. You're going, yeah, that's that's right. I've never thought of it that way. When whenever you get out of when you get out of kindergarten or grammar school or or junior high, you got to go here. But yeah. when you get out of high school, you actually have choices on your own. You have to make choices. You know, I think we rush kids to make the choices. You know, when I was in Europe, over there, all their kids that graduated from high school went straight into the military. They had to serve two years in the military. Then they got to go to college. Correct. You know, I don't know if, you know, that might help you to uh, decide what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I think kids waste a lot of time the first two years not knowing what they want to do. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's all a business to get them to go to these colleges and sign up for this and that. Yep. But you're glad to be out of the military. You didn't want to make a career out of it. I thought about it, but uh, no, it wasn't for me. My brother, now I have a brother 10 years older than me. He retired general. Oh, he he was, well, did he did he go through to Vietnam? Twice. Did he see any action? No, he was, uh, he was an officer then. I mean, I don't know. He was a little ahead of it, right? Yeah. Where's he live? He lives in Florida. He, uh, he, he taught school at Cleveland High School for years after he, Retired Is from the military. Right? He, yeah, he taught physics at Cleveland High School. Terry Hickson is his name. I don't know if I ever... And then he ended up, he was with the reserve unit. He stayed in the reserve after he got out of the Army. And uh, he retired as a general out well, of the reserves, from what I understand. Did you work for Cletus Benton, or who was it you I worked did. for? That was my first job when I came back from the military. At the Gibsons, or the... or the, What was it? No, he owned the... Hull he what he owned then? He owned Benton Pontiac and Buick. And uh, I went to work at Benton Pontiac and Buick. Where I, were they located then? Over um, where Kyle Dodge used to be in that building. And then... Uh, was that after the war? I mean, after, after, the, after I, you got out? Yeah. yeah. Were you going to just sell cars? Well, I started out just working, running cars. I ran them to the body shops and... No. Did all the had the detail work done and kept them moving to get them ready for the used car lot. And then I ended up getting in sales and I sold cars for years. What was your overall opinion of Cletus Benton? Great guy. He did a lot for Cleveland. Was he real smart? 
uh, Cletus came from a, yeah, he was smart in the fact that he came from a background. I mean, he he had to work to get what he, where he was, and he had to, uh, you know, Cletus worked hard. He was at the right place at some of the times. You know, he ended up with the, started out with the Starview Drive-In Theater. Yeah. That was his first thing, and that thing was popular back then. Mm -hmm. I guess that made him enough money to, he built a, uh, a couple of little strip malls, I think is what he, he did, and then he ended up having a Holiday Inn. But when did he have the, Bonniac, the Benton Pontiac thing? Um, he probably got that after he, he had the Starview, and I think he bought Benton Pontiac Buick from Kyle Motor Company. There was a Kyle Motor Company then, George Kyle? No. That was his daddy. George's daddy. Yes. I liked George, didn't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Cletus had that, and then he ended up building that, uh, the big place. I remember that. Where I, wholesale is. That's now. what I remember. Mm-hmm. But, but, but Cletus was, uh, then he had, I remember when he opened up Shoney's. Remember that? Oh yeah, Shoney's was a, that was a huge sale for him. Shoney's, uh, remember how they used to be lined? You'd drive by there on Sunday after church. To, no, you'd drive by on Friday nights to see how long the line was to see if you wanted to stay. Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Was that the only, that was the only? Breakfast too. <laughs> yeah. Was that the only place in town to eat like that at the time? Well, you had the old fort. Yeah. And that was over where Life Care is now, up on the hill. And they had the little old fort. No, it, no, it was the old fort. Was it uh, Goulard's Pizza? Was it Goulard's? That came after the old fort. Yeah, after, so the old fort was first. Yeah. Who had it? Was that Corky or was that somebody else? No, that was, uh, oh, I can't think of his name. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Um, Cason. It's Cal. Flavus. 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 Yeah. That's what, I couldn't think of his name. Yeah. And then uh, Flavus had the little old fort too. And then the old fort, he went and took over the old fort and gave up the little old fort. And I think that's when Corky got the little old fort. Yeah. And then later on, I guess Cason, I don't know what happened to that restaurant, but it closed down in a, at, pizza place went in there after that so I remember when uh, and then I remember when they opened up the Baskin Robbins I remember the day they opened that up yeah does that seem like yesterday to you or a long time ago well it looks back it's a long time now but it doesn't seem that long <laughs> but when I look at it it's a long time but but Cletus would you say that he was the uh, he was the guy then, wasn't he? Yeah, Cletus and I had a Cletus. My dad died when I was twelve, and he and my dad were friends, I think. And Cletus had a son named Steve Benton. And of course, my name is Steve, and I'm a year older than his son Steve. And uh, so I was working at the Holiday Inn. I always worked. And I was bussing tables back then in the restaurant. And I was doing porter work, taking deliveries down to the rooms and so forth. And Steve, his son, worked in there. And I never will forget one day I was in there cleaning tables and Cletus came in there and told his son, got him over in the corner, said, now son, he said, if you'll play football and make an 85 in every subject, he said, I'm going to let you come over and order you a brand new car. Anything you want. Steve said, thank you, Dad. Mm. And Cletus left. And I got the thing, and I'm over at Clean Old Sale. I said, boy, that's a, that's a, I said, man, I said, that boy yeah. was lucky. I said, he's really lucky. A few minutes later, Cletus comes back in there to me, and he said, Steve Hicks and I made my son a deal. I'm going to make you the same deal. Now, what made him do that? I don't know. But... Uh, 
he he told me that he gave me the same deal. Well, that's when I went to school the next day and changed some of my subjects. <laughs> and anyway, I started making eighty five in every subject, and I got to order me a brand new GTO. I had a GTO back then, had everything you could put on it. Did Cletus pay for it? I didn't pay for it. It was a demo. I don't know how you set those up, but there was a couple of players. He gave some of the coaches cars, and uh, I know Bill Emmerdorfer had a car. So Co he coaches from UT. Some of so the coaches Cletus from was UT. a good Cletus. He had cars. Cletus wanted to help. Yeah. Didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, I, I made 85 in every subject. Mm -hmm. I, I played football. <laughs> Whatever happened to his son? Steve just, uh, I don't know. He's just kind of a hermit now. He lives out in his grandmother's in Cleveland? grandfather's old, old hat facility out here off Georgetown Road, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get out much, so I don't know. So you're saying Cletus Benton was a real entrepreneur, a pioneer, a go-getter, a hard worker, etc.? Yeah, you know, uh, he owned... Everything up and down Key Street there for a long time. And he and Ben Moore. Yeah, ben, ben, Moore ben Moore were the two. Weren't they partners? They were in some things. Yeah. And then, you know, they split up. And, you know, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, whatever it took to get a deal done sometimes. They were putting deals together right and left. It's hard to do that nowadays with the way things are a little bit different, don't you think? Mm-hmm. So, so your dad, when did he die of? He had a massive heart attack when he was 42. He had, uh, my dad had, uh, he, he had the Spot Restaurant. A lot of people don't realize that. I didn't know that. Uh, my dad was at the Spot, had the Spot Restaurant from 1938 when it opened to 1955. Did he open it? Yes. So he was the owner? Yes. There was a guy, a Jewish guy from Atlanta, Georgia. His name was Curtis Sewell. And he had a couple of these places, one in Rome, Georgia, and one in Atlanta, Georgia. They called the spot? I think they had a different name, but they were similar, mm -hmm. okay? And, in fact, they weren't the spot because my dad bought the sign, the spot, from a guy that came through town one day. He had made that sign for a restaurant in Dalton, Georgia. And... Back then, those neon signs, it took a while to make them. Yeah. And the guy went to deliver the sign to Dalton, Georgia, and the guy was already out of business the time he got down there. So he was coming back through Cleveland, and I think he was from Kentucky or somewhere, and uh, he stopped at the restaurant. It was called the Orange Tico then. Orange Tico. And that was because of an orange drink that they had that they used to serve in the spot. And mm -hmm. that restaurant was called the Orange Tico then. And he got to talking to that guy, and that guy showed him that sign out there in the back of the truck. Well, my dad bought that sign that day. And you can't make that up, can uh, <laughs> That's when the name of the restaurant changed to the spot. So the spot was called the spot because a guy in Dalton went out of business before the guy from Kentucky could get his sign to him. That's right. And he happened to go... That way back home. That's Highway 11. Yeah. the main road. <laughs> the spot was a place to be. Did you know Lyman and... Oh, yeah, Lord, yeah. I, I grew up there. That's how come I was fat. I was, I'd go there and eat chili and hot dogs and hamburgers and milkshakes every day just about. Lyman, what was the other guy's name? Lyman and... Well, there's Chester Perkins. Chester, yeah. Chester worked there for my dad for years. He ran the cash register, right? He, well... Later on, he did. He was a cook for a long time, and, and and my dad, he sold his half interest of the spot because this Grady Sewell owned half of it out of Atlanta. Mm. He sold his half out to uh, uh, Chester, and that's when he started the Town and Country Restaurant. And the Town your, and your dad, my dad, and my dad had the Town and Country. Where is it? Where is it at? Um. You know where the Cherokee Hotel was? Yes, yeah. was. Mm -hmm. Right down there on the corner, there's a bank. What's that bank on the corner? It's called um, Regions? No. Sun Trust? No. Down there. Pinnacle. Pinnacle. Yeah. That used to be the Cleveland Hotel, where the Pinnacle Bank is. That whole block was Pinnacle Hotel. I mean, was uh, uh, 
the Cleveland Hotel. Mm -hmm. The restaurant was in the bottom on the corner of that hotel. And that's where you went in and out of the restaurant. The big restaurant, it's nice. it was the nicest restaurant in Cleveland at the time. Tablecloths and a whole, oh, everything. There's tables yeah. and chairs yeah. Yeah. and all that. And uh, anyway, uh, I remember I was a teenager. My dad died when I was 12, so I was barely a teenager. I had gone to Chattanooga to a, some kind of a concert or something they had down there. I don't even remember who it was, but I remember they made an announcement that they needed all the volunteer firefighters and all firemen to report back to Cleveland. There was a major fire broke out, and that's Cleveland's largest fire they ever had to this day. That whole block was on fire. And when did how did he when did he die of the heart well, my, attack? My, well, let me say this: my dad died when I was twelve. My mother took over that business. Did, did that scare her? Do you remember that? When I he, mean, she was all of a sudden stuck without a husband that was running the business. She never had a job and never driven a car. So how was her attitude the she, next week? She got up and went down there and took over that restaurant and started running. Do you remember at being 12 years old? Yeah. And uh, she went to Hammond Driving School and learned how to drive a car and bought her first car. Do you and then it burnt down later. Three years later, the restaurant burnt down. So. But do you remember when she took over? Was it stressful to her? Do you remember that? At she 12? went right in there and took over, so I don't know. I was, I just, it had it, to have been, right? Yeah. I think I went down there and helped wash dishes just try to help. She did it. So once it burned down, there was no... Did she keep it for three years? She had it for three years, and then it burnt down. That's when it, somebody she, fell asleep in the hotel with a cigarette burning mm -hmm. back then, and it just caught the whole building on fire. Do you think that the fact that your dad died young, did that bother you? Obviously it did, but I mean. Well, I mean, you always try to figure out. I always thought my dad, I look back, would have been right in the midst of the fast food business if, when it came by. He was headed that way, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. He knew a lot about restaurant business. So you never know. The world changes. You never know what's going to happen next. you got to roll with the changes. That's right. But do you think the fact that your dad died young and and maybe you didn't have, that, that maybe that's what you're wanting to do with this Boys and Girls Club that you see yeah, that, that I think you're... So. I think that's what makes me interested in it because I grew up without a parent, you know. Now, my mother got remarried uh, later on to Carl Green. He was my stepdad. And i tell you something, he was the best guy in the world. Now, they got married when I was a senior. They got married when I was a junior in high school, and they built a house, and I was living on Emmett Avenue then, and, and uh, they built a house and moved out. I lived with them for, oh, for a couple of years, I guess. But but from 12 to junior high is really important years, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why I, was, I didn't do very well in high school at the time because I was, everybody loved me. But I just wasn't interested in the schoolwork. Now, if somebody had been there to guide me a little bit, I'd have done better in school, yeah. I think. But, uh, you know, I, I've got something that I think is ending in the future, and that's called common sense. I had a lot of common sense. Where did you get that, you think? I think just putting a... Maybe you just had to. I had to, yeah. I was always able to read people. Win friends and influence people. Did you ever have that class? I did. Yeah. Dale Carnegie? Yeah. Yep. I had it. Yep. I'll tell you something, <laughs> Cletus, when I went into car sales, that was another thing Cletus did for me. He sent me to Atlanta, Georgia, to a sales uh, school down there that was for owners' kids. It was the, it was, it was the college of sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. And I went to that course down there. So that's where I learned a lot about people and sales and marketing. And, and Cletus was a big influence on you, wasn't he? He was. Yeah, yeah, he was. You know, I hear people every now and then say stuff bad about him. I didn't know about him, but you're, you're here to dispute it, right? Well, you know, I, 
there was a long lawsuit that was over land and so forth back then. Cletus was basically signed a note for, for the lady or something that he was getting all this land from, but she loved him. She thought the world of him, and they proved, I think, that she was out of town, and he just signed the note off or something like that to try to get the deal done or something, and I don't know, it came back to haunt him. And the only winners in that trial was the attorneys. Mm -hmm. That was the only ones. The attorneys is the only well, it sounds like even, the, even the, the family of the ladies, uh, kids, they lost everything to that attorney. The attorney got everything. But the main thing is, Cliff Benton was a good guy. I think so, yeah. And you knew him well. Yeah. Yeah. He, but, was, he was good for Cleveland. Evidently. Mm -hmm. He was really a, more of a... Uh, I don't know, more of a big thinker and pioneer than, can you think of anybody else in Cleveland that was more of an influence on Cleveland than Cleveland Spent, as far as the infrastructure? Well, Ben Moore did a lot for Cleveland, he too. He did? Yeah. Ben Moore and Cleveland were, they were the movers and it's shakers. It's almost the back. same thing. Yeah, they were the movers and shakers for all the development in Cleveland back then. And Key Street. I remember when Key Street was a d just dirt, you know, and the side streets off Key Street were dirt. And Key Street, Cletus Benton developed all that. I've got... Uh, we're talking about Cletus Benton had the Pontiac Place, the Holiday Inn, put in Key Street, had Shoney's, and had Baskin, Baskin Robbins. And he had several little shopping places. Right, so I'm saying, how do you beat that? At that age. And let me tell you something, he came from a, he came from across the hill over here in the poor section of town too. Cletus didn't, he didn't have a, uh, anything. He got started from nothing too. He came from a small, poor family. Steve, you have really done it. You've done it. I can see your passion in this and I believe I know now why. <laughs> Do you ever have, feel like a, T.L. Larry hunting for money? <laughs> well, not really, but I'm always looking for it. I'm trying to help the club every way we can. And, you know, and here's what I found out about legacy giving. People don't think about it. People, a lot, you'd be shocked that people don't have wills. It's just amazing oh, yeah. to me that people that, that don't have wills, and there's really no reason not to have a will. And at the in your will... It's so easy to set up some legacy living if you want to do it. Uh, uh, In other words, now, nowadays you can do a will and do percentages. You want everything to go to your wife, okay? After your wife's gone, you want everything to go here, here, and here. You can do it in percentages. I want 20%, this, that, 30% here, and just set it up as a deal and everything will be shared out and split. If you things that you leave for your family, like your IRA, uh, things like that, mm -hmm. they're going to tax them. Yeah. They're going to tax them. You can leave that as an IRA to a place like this and a non-profit, and they'll get the full benefit of it. Where probably if you left it to a family member, they'll only get 40% of it or less before it's over. But you can rearrange and put things in your family's name like homes and things like that, where they can get more from it. I don't know. We have a financial planner on the staff now. If anybody would like to meet with them, it's free. We'll be happy to. Anybody wants to talk to me about anything, I'll be happy to talk to them about it. Um, or take a tour. Or give, give you a tour. Here's an event I started years ago that's been pretty successful for us called Cash for Kids. Mm -hmm. And this is that annual deal. I that hit reverse, you, yeah. I, I hit you up for it every year. I'm going to win it this year. <laughs> anyway, it's that reverse <laughs> raffle. We do it every year. It's $500 a ticket. But now I've got it set up where people can pay in it. They can pay a, uh, so much a month and have a ticket at the end of the year mm. and still about $100 gets donated to the club. 
But if and that's for a thirty thousand dollar drawing. It's a chance to win thirty thousand dollars. And somebody wins it every year, don't they? So it's a good way to give money mm -hmm. and have fun too. And it's a good party to go to. It includes a dinner for two mm -hmm. and. Uh, I've gone for the past <laughs> ten, eight or ten years, I guess, right? Yep. And uh, you know we've got a lot of things going on. I think one of the next things I'd like to see us do in Cleveland is we need to build a new uh, teen center. We're just busting at the seams up there where we are, so, you know. <clears throat> now, Ted Moss gave some money for the, Ted and Ann Moss, for the, what was that building for? I was there when he gave. He, he helped us buy some land that uh, joined us, and there's another building back there that yeah. we haven't done anything with yet, Yeah. which we call the Moss Annex. That, uh, but Ted that, and that, Ann Moss That's annex. where that bicycle track I told you mm -hmm. for Cleveland yeah. made and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, it'll fit real good with this. Oh, yeah. We'll get Ted to give another 50. <laughs> you better be careful. You're going to give <laughs> both of <in> trouble. <laughs> anyway, if anyone would like to donate some money, please give us a call. Check our website. Uh, um, I'm not even sure. It's uh, www.bgco. C-O-E-E dot O, Boys and Girls Club, O-C-O-E dot org, I believe is the way it is. But uh, anyway, you can find out more there. Steve, you're doing a great thing. You'll yeah. be a legacy. You'll be dear to doing a legacy on your own with this. Well, I enjoy doing it, so that's mm -hmm. what. You know, if you enjoy doing something, it's like you do all this building because you just enjoy it. I enjoy it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it.